guys today. I want to take a minute. We're gonna, I've been working on getting a bunch of them put up, but I'm going to show you guys how I get mine ready to go. I know a lot of you are going to call me crazy, tell me it's a waste of time, not gaining anything, uh, you know, if her prices are, whatever. This is how I've done it for a while now, and this is how I'm going to continue to do it, so it doesn't matter. Um, if anybody wants to pick it up and try it, fine. If not, that's fine too. But I wash every single one of the coons that I catch, whether it looks clean or it's mud ball, whatever. They get washed. Like I do pick up on a washing machine a lot of times. People got them sitting on the sidewalk. You can pick them up, take them, buy them for cheap, whatever. Um, you'd be surprised how dirty a uh, clean coon <coughs> really is. I mean, think about what a raccoon does for a living all day, every day. They are hunting for food in, you know, uh, cricks, mud puddles, seeps, and even on the dry ground when they're looking for, uh, you know, corn and acorns and stuff like that. They're still in the dirt, they're still in the mud, and let's also think about where they sleep. They're sleeping in crooks and trees, which are dirty. They're sleeping inside of trees, uh, holes in the ground, old buildings, whatever, barns, pretty much everything dirty, crawling into hay mounds. Um, so this is how I do it. Like I said, if nobody else wants to try it or if nobody else likes it, that's fine. <clears throat> so get them all ready to go. Dump in a little bit of borax. And uh, I do 10 or 12 at a time. Get them put up on the board. And uh, after these are all done washing, I take them out and let them drip dry for a little bit. Usually a spin cycle gets them dry enough to put up anyhow, but I let them drip a little bit. And uh, so once we do this, it up and start flushing these guys out. So we'll get back with you in a little bit. And uh, flushing our raccoons. Um, as you can see, I wear an old pair of waders. Uh, these things were leaking years ago, and I've been using them for a few years now. And I like just your normal cheapo flushing knife. I sharpen this thing how I want. Get pretty sharp over here, not so sharp in the middle and over this way. I do my cutting on this side. I'll see when we get to that. <coughs> and PVC beam made this years ago as well. And it's worked out great for me ever since. I use it for everything aside from muskrats and mink, which I don't flush on a beam anyhow. So let's uh, we'll get one here. Nice big one. You, know, you want to make sure, even after the washer, give them a good comb. No burrs in them. No nothing. You can see how clean he is. Turned inside out. I like to use an old towel. Gives you a little bit of grip up here so it keeps them from moving around. And I also like to start, this is just the way that I do it. You know, same way with everything. On the I start on the right side of the king. If you're looking at it. Well, if you're looking at the belly, it's the right side. <coughs> so, I'm going to start up here behind here. There's always a big chunk of meat. I'll usually get that off. I'll get in here behind the ear. Start slicing some of that down. When all the work happens, it's fun going out trapping every day. Now when things slow down, you gotta get your fur put up. Just get it right over top of the leg, right around it. And then what I like to do is pull up, put the leg on top of the beam. I was gonna flush the armpit area. too much about doing this little bit right here below 
they're junk. Um, I'm going to cut that out from my window anyhow. Switch around to the other side. Same thing. Start up in here by the cheek. Get everything started. Just about everything on the sides of the canes should be basically pushing. There's not a whole lot of cutting going on except for maybe getting started up around the cheek area up in here but even then a lot of times you can still get started just pushing that back up to the armpit again get that all cleaned out like I said don't worry too much about this well I don't anyhow if you want to flush around that, that's fine. Get the other leg. Good clean. And we're up here. Get to start on the back of the coon. <clears throat> now, if the coon's big, like these ones are, a lot of times, you don't want to have your nose all the way down on the stretcher like this because this gets loose and bunched up. What helps me a little bit is to pull it up kind of closer to the ears. Get this in here nice and tight, the shoulder area. And you just want to start slicing it down. Get through that gristle and everything. And basically, once you get it started, pressure on these as long as like I said you got them cutting good there's no burrs and it's basically just all the whole pushing now you adjust every once in a while make it easy on your back so you're not leaning way down the beam like this I work down just get one side worked off See, this one's got a ton of fat. Most of these big games are going to. You just go down, work down one side, cutting out to the edge of the fur, come down the other side, once again, cutting to the edge. And we'll do a couple swipes down the center. to it. <coughs> nice clean coon hide. Don't worry about you know any little bits and pieces you got left on it from coming off the knife or whatever. My saddle melt off as it's drying. And after it's dry, you know, you're gonna wipe it with a rag. No, it's gonna come off anyhow. So we'll get this guy on board, getting pinned out. I got a new camera. We'll see you in a second. One more thing, I guess, before we go over there. He's a lot of sawdust. As you can see, I have two garbage bags here full. This one was full. I like to clean my hands, keep them dry. Since I don't wear gloves, I know I already wear gloves. And let it all just fall on my beam. Then a couple swipes with the hand on the beam. Nice, fresh, clean beam again. Don't got junk everywhere, no grease, no fat. So, see you guys in the All right, here we go. <clears throat> yeah, nice looking clean here. I'll flushed out, came on the board. I know I didn't video myself skinning any coons. What I like to do when I'm skinning them, I get down to the nose area, 
I like to pull down that nose and leave as little cartilage as possible on here. That gives you just a little extra when you're pulling down. You know, I don't know how much it gives you. Maybe it's just in my head. But something that I do. Pull down. Get the legs even. Legs nice and pinned out, nice and open. Check this little piece off here. And like I said, I didn't worry about any of this junk here. This is going to be my window. I don't want a huge, big, wide window on these. I want enough they can see though. And I like to tie my front legs. I know a lot of people just cut them, leave them open. And this is just something that I do. <clears throat> it appeals to my eye, so. Now when you're putting up your furs, you want to take a little bit of pride in it. Especially if you're selling local. You know, you want people to, when you walk in, you want to be attracted to what you got. So now we'll pull the tail down. This is what I do. I put one pin on each side of the tail. Get my skirt down. Even with those. And this is all the more pins that I use on my skirt. Eight two. I know. Some guys like to use a whole bunch of pins. Looks nice. But I don't like pushing that many pins. And that keeps your skirt where it needs to be. Now my tails. I could also sit here. I used to pleat them, you know, bunching them up. And yeah, it looks nice. Man, I got tired of doing pins. So I went and bought plastic gutter guard. Cut them. I'm not sure exactly what size these are. But um, cut them how I like them. Lay them down on your fur. I tried the wire mesh before. It's just too sharp. It's always nicking up my hands and everything else. This plastic stuff's never going to go bad. It's never going to rust. Three pins down the center. A lot of times my tail's longer. I should have made these longer probably, but I didn't. But anyhow, by the time you get down here, there's not much to anyhow except one pin in the end of the tail. Keep it from flopping down. <clears throat> now, I like my belly boards going in from the belly. That's the name, belly board. I have been reading and reading and reading about a guy that said, put them in from the mouth. So it's easier to get them off of the board and all this other stuff. Doesn't really matter. I tried that on the first 40 pin I did this year and it did not work for me. Had a heck of a time getting them off the board. If that works for you and you want to try it, more power to you. you know, just because I do things one way doesn't mean anybody else does them that way or that they like them or don't like them. Now another thing I forgot to mention when I'm fleshing my coons, I like mine to be you know, pretty much room temperature. I don't want uh, uh, my fat, or skin a warm coon and flesh warm coon I guess is what I'm saying. I know tons of guys like to let the fat kind of set up on them, you know get to like that buttery consistency. Once again, not for me. So, try a bunch of different things, you know. See what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Don't let just one person influence you one way. And, uh, you know, get some nice looking coons. And like I said, this is the work. The fun's catching them. And uh, the first, <laughs> first 50 or 100 are the hard ones after that. They kind of just roll on by. So, if you're catching a bunch of them, uh, good luck to you and if you're not catching a bunch of them good luck to you that's fine a lot of people don't and um, get this guy hung up like I said nose down I want fat to run off of this not down into the skirt and that's pretty much it there's not a whole lot to take them off the board all I do when I take them off is a bunch of old rags I want to cut up t-shirts you know when the skin is dry before I take it off wipe it down and that's all there is to it.
And that's the end pretty much. Final product. Or will be the final product. And then bag them. Take them to our NAF uh, depot guy. And uh, I'll probably try and get a little bit of video of that when that comes up. So we'll see you guys later. Uh, one thing I forgot to touch on and I really wanted to was um, getting rid of your carcasses and stuff. Uh, it's one thing that's overlooked by a lot of people. If you're going 20, you know, not, not too many critters, um, it's really not that big of a deal. Kind of easy to get rid of somewhere probably. But, um, you know, don't be throwing them over your game lanes, parking lots and stuff like that. <coughs> people don't like to see that. And, you know, I know you gotta get rid of them, but find somewhere better to do it if you can. And uh, but now here you're quite going uh, hundreds of animals and stuff like that. Yeah, you really gotta have a plan ahead of time. And that's where a lot of preseason stuff comes into play. So you know you want to have that go before you get to the point and you have a stack full of uh, carcasses laying there. And then you're like, oh man, I gotta do something with these. So. One other thing that comes in, you know, preseason play, it's not all just scouting and, you know, getting permission and stuff like that. Um, you know, got to plan what you're going to do after you catch them. Not only your carcasses, if you're putting the stuff up as well, and you got, you know, our fat and meat off of them. And that in itself becomes a job, just getting rid of all that. Uh, I know some people that have dug holes, put everything in them covered them up after season. Myself, uh, you know, we have a little bit of property and I'm able to, I just, I've been dumping mine into the head of one of our valleys for a while. And I, you know, feed some of the lot of animals and stuff, all the birds and prey and stuff, they love it. So, but there, you know, you have some other options. Um, there's quite a few out there. And you gotta, like I said, have a plan before season rolls around you're going to be stuck <laughs> with a bunch of rotten animals. Nobody wants that. So, just something I wanted to comment on. You know, not, like I said, a lot of people are looking. But something you definitely need to think about. So, I still got a little bit of skin to do. So, we'll get to that. And, uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a good one.